Well, isn't that a little cutie? It's actually kind of a rare bird. It's a Martin guitar from 1958, and it is a number 5, 18. That's right, a number 5. That's the smallest production size Martin made uh, for a flat top guitar. And it's only got about a 21 and 5 16 scale length. Pretty cool. The, um, I guess the player who's most recognized for these uh, would be Marty Robbins. You know, the guy who did out in the West Texas towns of El Paso, I fell in love with a Mexican girl. You know that one? Anyway, it's they only made about 2,700 of these between um, 1898 and 1989, so there aren't that many of them. And this one, I think they, they probably marketed them as... Um, like a three-quarter size guitar or a beginner's guitar, which would be, I mean, you'd have to have rich parents to get you this one for your first guitar. But it's got a little bit of a crack here, um, a pick guard crack has opened up. You know, the old celluloid in these guards, uh, Martin adhered it right to the wood and over time it shrinks and it can pop open a grain line. Classically, you see them over here between the pick guard and the bridge, but in this case, it's next to the lining. Evidence of the history. Someone uh, initialed it there. Looks like AN or AM. Seen some bumps and some knocks. Spent some time without a case. Uh, probably went on some adventures around the world. Neck's in good shape. I think it had a neck reset at one point. I see some little droplets of glue there that would not be original down by the end of the fingerboard tongue <clears throat> and the fretboard has been dressed and the frets looked after by someone who really knows how it's good quality work so made a little cleat here you can see the size and shape I usually shoot for it's about half inch square maybe 80 thousandths thick so that's like 12 millimeters square by 2 millimeters thick and positioned here diagonally the grain runs across at an angle I'm using hot hide glue so there's no time to dilly dally here. I get a big lake of it on the surface to hold the heat then work it backwards and forwards with my fingers to uh, get some in the crack. After that I'll pump it through with the suction cup that'll push it all the way to the other side. On a crack this tight I don't really need to clamp it it's self leveling and it's you know it's very tight it'll close up by itself. Just a little warm water to clean off the excess glue and the cleats are pretty much the same thing. Um, I use these uh, magnets, they're rare earth magnets, to hold them in place. I just get them where I want them, press down for a minute or so, and then I'll leave them. In, I'll leave the magnets on for a couple hours until the glue's set. Okay, got some strings on it here. We went up a gauge from 11s to 12s. That's what the customer wanted, and uh, I checked it out with a string gauge um, tension calculator first to make sure it would be okay with the short scale. There's no problem. 12 to 54s works fine. Uh, Want to do some setup work? It's pretty good on the treble side, uh, kind of high on the bass, and just looking at the saddle, I see some things I don't really like. First of all, it's really flat on top, which isn't ideal, and more importantly. On the lower strings, the windings around the end of the string are actually, in this case, touching the saddle. If I try to take the action down farther, the um, those windings are actually going to creep right across it. There's your tone, there's your volume, there's your intonation, all goes away. So uh, I think we're going to have to do something about that. I contacted the owner and said, you know, probably the best bet is to make a small bridge pad overlay, which I've done a lot in the last little while. Uh, which is going to sink the string balls down further, and uh, that way I can lower the saddle slightly. I'm um, going to have to work on the top of this saddle, not only to round it, but because this is the old style through saddle, um, if I want to remove a 32nd of an inch, I can't just scrub it off the bottom because these things taper away to basically nothing on their ends, and you'll end up decreasing the width of the saddle in the slot, and you end up with this great big gap on either side, and that's not doesn't look good. So we're going to work on the top. The first thing i got to do is make that uh, overlay. Okay, there's the overlay patch. It's thin. It's the lightest maple I have. It's actually got some figure on it too. So that just um, gets glued in place. A couple of screws through the outside string holes to keep it in position. Put a clamp on it and then we'll be ready to continue. <laughs> I forgot the fact that I was working on a very small guitar. 
getting my hand all the way into the right spot was going to be very difficult. So rather than the screws, I'm using a couple of pieces of string um, fed through the outside holes with a couple of beads. Get the glue on there, pull it up into position, then I can get the clamps on. I'm marking the points where the strings cross the saddle so I can then measure down from there uh, to remove the amount of material that will give me the correct action. I'll just uh, connect the dots to make a nice smooth curve. Using a file I'll remove material down to the line keeping the profile flat at first and then I can move it one way or the other for intonation and also um, round it over for a nice smooth takeoff for the strings. Then just use various abrasives to get a nice clean polish. So the action is much better. Here's something I've noticed on old Martin bridges. They're radically asymmetrical in ways that don't quite make sense. If you look at the length of the saddle slot from here to the edge of the uh, low E string, that's about 11 and a half millimeters. On the treble side, 16. Now this is something that modern reproductions almost never get right. They're usually bilaterally symmetrical. I guess the old ones, I mean, they're either made by hand or they're made on a machine using a template that was made by hand. And all those little inconsistencies add up. They're made to a really high level of finish. They're well designed. But there's a human quality to these that modern ones just seem to lack. Like a modern Taylor bridge to me looks almost robotic in its perfection. I like the way these look. I think they're, I don't know, there's a human quality to this stuff that I just find really appealing.